I'm Tim Nesmith, ship superintendent of the USS Kidd, and we are in Thomas E. Shipyard in dry dock number six. We're going under the caution tape into prohibited area. We're rebels. Uh, and today we're going to tell you a little bit about the underside of the ship and our propulsion system. Everybody in the comment sections is gaga over our rudder, but the rudder is boring. We're not going to talk about that yet. What we're going to talk about, and I'm going back out in the safe area, is our propellers. They are single solid cast propellers. They're made out of manganese bronze. And by single solid cast, what I mean is there's no pieces and parts. This is all one solid piece from side to side, one big casting poured, and then they use special tools and grinders and polishing to get this shape, this three-bladed shape. And you can see the three blades. Now, right here, this piece is not part of the propeller. This is called the fairing cap. Um, and before I get to the rest of the fairing cap, let's address some comments that are gonna be coming. Because I call it a propeller, other people call it screws, some people call it weird people, call it wheels. I don't know where that comes from, but it's a propeller. Um, it's shaped like a screw, hence people calling them screws. It cuts through the water the same way a screw bores into wood or bores into concrete or metal. Uh, so that's how you get that nickname. But it is a propeller. The Navy refers to it as a propeller. Going back to our fairing cap, the fairing cap's purpose is as this cuts through the water, the flow of the water comes out and instead of just coming out at force in a large area, this channels the flow to a point. And so it moves through the water better that way. There's no cavitation behind the propeller like you would have if you didn't have this here. Uh, there's a nickname for it and it's called the dunce cap. So it looks like the little dunce cap that people like myself and my colleagues in the historic fleet sometimes wear. So that is our propeller. Now the propeller, is 11 feet 3 inches in diameter, much smaller than a battleship's. We know that, this is a destroyer. Um, and it has a 12 foot 1.5 inch pitch. Now, what is a pitch? The pitch is, quite simply, if you look at the propeller side on, you can see the, the width of it and everything, and you can see the curvature, the screw formation, the pitch is how far in distance the propeller travels through the water with one rotation of the propeller. It's not the width of the propeller, but the distance traveled as this cuts through and pushes the ship through the water. Incidentally, the two propellers are set up to where they rotate in different directions so that you don't have, if they're both rotating in the same direction, you don't have the hull slewing to one side or the other. It's balanced and it cuts through the water straightly. So that's our propellers. Our shafts are 15.75 inches in diameter. The port side shaft runs 95 feet in distance and the starboard side shaft runs 165 feet. Now do your math, kid is 376 feet long, 165 feet from that. That tells you that that comes out very, very close to midships on the ship. So I'm on board, kid. Directly behind me is a small scuttle that goes down into the forward engine room. And it goes down, the ladder comes down right beside the after bulkhead and when you get to the bottom of that ladder, you're standing directly above where the shaft exits the reduction gear. So the starboard shaft, shaft number one, is 162 feet long, and that means that from almost midships on the kid, it goes all the way aft through multiple compartments and comes out of the hull and ends, terminates at the prop. By comparison, the port side shaft is only 92 feet long. And I'm farther back on the hull now. Right behind me is the kid's post office slash ship store. And just beyond that little grilled window behind me is another 
hatch that goes down to the aft engine room right alongside its aft bulkhead and correspondingly also directly above the reduction gear. So right at this point, now the shaft starts and goes through various compartments out the hull and terminates at the prop. So a much shorter run for this prop as compared for the starboard prop shaft, which has a lot more torque on it and can have a lot more problems over a long distance turning something that long and that much weight. All right, notice I'm outside the yellow tape now, but Molly is still inside. She is bad. I'm bad. I'm bad. Um, this right here uh, is the result from deteriorated metal that has given way from blasting. Uh, and you can see they've zinced it, so it's protected now. It's kind of not going to be rusting. This will eventually be fixed while we're in the yard. But I wanted to point something else out to you. Here you go, Miss Molly. This hole right here did not used to be this large. This hole originally started out about this tall and about that wide. And this is not from blasting. This is the way it arrived in the yard. And this is the result of people on the riverbed back in 2022 and 2023 when we supposedly had record low river levels, which we didn't. Only 2011 has record low river levels in Baton Rouge. You're talking about further north for that. But all of that aside, people were coming down in droves on the riverbed. They're braving these big rocks along the, the embankment of the levee that the Corps of Engineers put there. You can turn your ankle and break your ankle real easily. And they were braving the snakes in the riverbed. Why did it have to be snakes? It's not a good place to be in the riverbed, but they were coming down and they were actively grabbing a hold of this and ripping pieces of the sheet metal off until you finally got to a really solid metal and you couldn't rip it off anymore. That's not cool. National Historic Landmark. Please don't do that. So one of the other acts of vandalism that we had was somebody grabbed one of those rocks that's all along the the embankment next to the kid, the Corps of Engineers put it there, put those rocks there so that it would stop erosion uh, moving toward the levee, which it's been successful at doing that. Uh, but somebody grabbed one of those rocks and carved Joni Loves Chachi or whatever their names were, big part, name plus name, initials plus initials into the bronze propeller blades. Now, you know, doing that to a tree, Okay, fine, although ecologists wouldn't agree with me. But uh, carving it into a National Historic Landmark, come on, people, that's not cool. We had to send Nathan Bergeron down to the riverbed, slogging through the mud, and he had to get out his special tools and smooth out that etching into the metal. It didn't carve up the rock, it actually carved up the bronze a little bit, because bronze is a softer metal. Brass and copper are softer metals compared to steel. So please don't do that. So in addition to the damage that vandalism has done to the uh, sheathing uh, around the strut and to the etching on the propeller, we also had our anodes messed with uh, by vandals. And you can't see them right now because they've removed all of the old anodes. Uh, those were zinc anodes and they're not good for fresh water. We're replacing them with new anodes. They'll be either aluminum or magnesium, which both work better in fresh water than zinc does. But we had multiple people climb up onto the struts, climb up onto the propellers for photographs. And at some point, some kid climbed up the strut up toward the hull and started knocking off anodes. He succeeded in knocking one of them off. Now that is what protects the ship from electron theft. So the bronze manganese propellers are a different material than the steel above it and they tend to steal electrons from each other which corrodes the ship and thins out the hull. And that, those anodes are what keeps that from happening. They're called sacrificial because it'll steal electrons from the anodes before it steals electrons from the hull. To be a sacrifice. So when you come down to the kid and you climb up on this stuff, first of all, please don't climb up on it because you can get hurt. Second of all, 
don't knock the anodes off because that's what's letting the ship live longer. Help us out, please. We appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe, like, and share. And remember, go to USSKid.com to donate and support this dry dock effort. Let's make KID better than the bare minimum. See you on the next dry dock update.